So, where am I heading on this bright, sunny morning? It's 7.35 a.m. So, here we are, really going out somewhere. And I'm going on my second solo tour. This one's going to be a lot longer than the season one tour. I don't know how much of it I will record, how much of it you'll get to see. Hopefully we'll get to see some gorgeous roads, but most of today will be quite boring at your roads. 60, 70 mile an hour roads, and not country lanes. So, I will catch you all in a bit. My final destination for day one is a little village called Gorton, approximately 50 miles inland from the northeast coast. I have a couple of stops planned along the way. The longest journey in one go so far on this here Moto 650MT was to Skegness, a mere 100 miles each way, stopping at the Angel of the North, which like many people I guess have just driven past many times, but never took the time to stop and marvel at just how large this sculpture actually is. It was also a good place to stretch my legs and take a break from all the dual carriageway and motorway miles that I'd done getting here. It was a nice to see a mobile calf type van in the car park. A drink was certainly required as it turned out to be a scorching day and yet more travelling to do to get to my second destination. At least a lot of the next bit of today's ride won't be fast, straight, multi-lane roads. Just where and how many more miles will I cover? Keep watching. I chose to do day one using the bikes turn by turn sat nav on the dashboard. What's a better test than going somewhere new with an untested navigation application? Surely a sat nav is a sat nav after all. When you're riding and the directions make sense with what your brain knows then you have no trust issues. I do like these little nudgery back roads. I can feel the sea air coming through. Speed bump for a second ago was a bit uh, leery. And I finally made the seaside. And not far up from the seaside, is there a very special building? I do love how my stand up tell, tells me inches. I haven't got a clue how long 2,000 inches is. Let's be fair. I can't see the seaside. Like car that's enjoying it. Lovely day. I don't know, I hope you can see that as I came over the corner. I don't know how much light I'm getting. Very thin. Yeah, I'm just parking up here.
looking for where to park the motorcycle when the parking attendant shouted to me about where to park. And having free designated motorcycle parking is a bonus, even if it wasn't quite the largest area. But a rail to chain up to always makes things feel a little safer. It's a beautiful place to come and look around, walk on the beach, go walk through the dunes or even investigate the castle. I'd love to be able to get here early one morning and explore the area properly, but I feel like I'm walking around in a sauna in all my bike gear, tired, sore, hot and bothered, but happy at the same time. I think that's an old windmill. I've really enjoyed the roads from Newcastle upon Tyne up to Bamber Castle. Hopefully I can cool down back on the bike. Moving quickly in bike gear keeps you a little cooler, don't you think? I'm approximately 50 miles to my residence for now. Will I get some more lovely country roads? End of day one's riding has seen me covered just 296 miles. And the start of day two. Well, that's not really what I want to see at the start of my next leg of the journey, is it? Hope it doesn't turn round. The aim of today is to get into Scotland, enjoy the ride as much as possible. At the top of the screen you can see a replay of my route for today. Interested to see what roads I find along the way? and what interesting views or landmarks I see, then keep watching. The aim for today is to get from Gordon to Port Thleen, which is just south of Aberdeen, but I'm not going about A to B, but just trying to get around the coastal towns as much as possible, sticking to the east coast as much as I can, yet still getting to the right destination to book in on time. I've also decided to switch back to using Google Maps for day two. Google Maps really does like to take you down some country lanes. Gotta say this is a particularly wide for a Google Maps route. But I've set the camera on because it looks like it might be entertaining. Did he just flash me or is it just a trick of the camera? What do you think? Wonder what that sounds like on the camera. Oh, I do like some of these um, sharp deviation signs are buried in uh, hedgerows and stuff and Ooh. oh we nearly got the birdie birds apparently are not are quite a good in indicator of whether you're going faster than they than they used to. Where am I going? That's the first of many bridges today. Maybe you'd like to keep an eye out and see how many I do actually cross in the rest of this video today.
I'm going over the Union Canal. <laughs> hey! Oh, I'm sorry, but it seems to be that the microphone on the X3 makes the bike sound like some sort of large bumblebee. I'm not quite sure why. The country lanes and B roads around the UK are the roads I prefer to be riding. They don't have to be doing the 60 miles an hour speed limit. And although it can be quite entertaining if you know the road, or it can be quite dangerous if you've no idea where the next bend's going from or which direction it's going to be turning in. Sorry for the boss, can't get past the cyclist. And I presume that is a oil refinery. Tomorrow. I've never been this close to an oil refinery. So let's do a little bit of video. <laughs> Listening to the sat nav, I do wish it would uh, give me a different prompt when I've gone the right way. I do wish you'd say this is the correct way or this is the way. That would be so much more fun. There you are, there's an oil refinery. In the background you can see that there is actually a large flame see it now. shooting out of a very tall pipe. I presume this is some sort of uh, burn off. If anybody knows what it's actually burning, you can let me know in the comments, that'd be awesome. I was really struck with how big this facility is. It must be four or five times the size of our local industrial sites. Cooling towers. Mad, isn't it? That's huge. We all, time from time, get the directions wrong and go the wrong way. So, although it's very scenic and it looks very nice, I do think I can get to the seaside. Or can I? Find out in a second or two. The other thing Crowley is well known for is the fact that it has a drag racing strip, which there was a meet on, but it was very busy and I really didn't fancy taking the CF Moto 650 on a drag strip. So 
St Andrews. For the life of me, I can't remember what that's famous for. As I ride around, now I've seen lots of signs for different golf courses and Lynx golf courses and whiskey distilleries, but still, I don't quite remember why I'm driving through St Andrews and I think I should know where I am. St Andrews is a really pretty place to ride through. I think it looks like it possibly was a walled town. I'm not 100% sure without checking the history, but there is a ruin coming up, which would, if I wasn't in a hurry or travelling past, be quite happy to stop and have a look round and gaze at amazement. Finally getting close to the destination for the end of day two, covered 211 miles and I'd be quite happy to get off the bike and park and enjoy a meal and a night at a hotel. Thank you for watching and please like and subscribe and make sure you don't miss the next episode.